So we're about ready to start the last session of the afternoon. And uh, the uh, title of this session is Simulating Materials and Process Across the Length and Time Scales. These are the two speakers we have. Uh, just a, a word of um, introduction. The uh, speakers uh, 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 are there. Uh, this is really multi-scale modeling, but, we've, um, but, but with some particular aspects. So multi-scaling modeling is a much misused term, as everybody knows. Um, but here we're, we're looking at some uh, time and length scale problems. And um, as you see on the length scales I've put along the bottom there, uh, there is a really difficult uh, length scale which covers an enormous range of numbers of atoms where there are several simulation and modeling methods that get used. Um, and um, if we look on the time scale, a molecular dynamics covers uh, a fairly big range of time scales these days, if, especially if you can use some sort of classical force fields. Um, but we are often uh, very demanding on time scales and we want to do thermodynamics. And uh, one of the difficult subjects in thermodynamics is electrochemistry. Um, so uh, we've got uh, people now giving talks who are experts in certain aspects of the intermediate um, length scales and, and the difficult uh, um, bits of electrochemistry who are going to talk about their work. And uh, so without more ado, I shall hand over to the first speaker, who is Caetano Miranda Rodriguez. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to be back to ICTP. No, uh, <coughs> the idea is that, uh, is it, uh, okay, yeah. Okay. So, uh, first of all, the Total Energy was one of the first conferences that I've, I have attended. Uh, it also opens the doors to be part of ICTP as a postdoc. And uh, I mean, I am very grateful with the ICTP, particularly you know, the, uh, the things that I learned here, uh, the way to pursue excellence, tolerance, and also free thinking without frontiers, is something that in my country nowadays, you have to think about it again. And uh, definitely, uh, the experience here was very, uh, very good from scientific and also uh, from personal point of view. Now, the ch challenge uh, that I'm going to uh, talk talk today, actually started outside SATP. When I was uh, here on the top, uh, one of the questions I was mainly involved in to work on materials under uh, extreme conditions, high pressure, high temperature. And one of the questions that I have addressed, I mean, puzzled me, is actually how can you use the knowledge of, uh, the knowledge of uh, uh, atomic and molecular interactions in order to use for developing countries, I mean, particularly the industry uh, and also the resources that you have there. And uh, some of these questions actually uh, guide me what I'm going to show to you today, that is uh, the use of a multi-scale automatic simulations, where you're going to try to use uh, for uh, something that is interesting for a developing country, particularly the natural resources exploration, here there will be the oil and gas, and also the infrastructure the cement and asphaltic materials. And to do that, uh, you, knew, you, have to, you are going to use it uh, multi-scale uh, molecular uh, simulations. And uh, uh, not only will be interest, can be interesting for the industry, but also can help us to understand better some phenomena like uh, wettability and also uh, fluid dynamics. You know? And this can be a very challenge. Now, uh, the point that uh, uh, the system that you're going to try to address is the fluid flows through nanoporous media. And this is, can be very interesting for several kinds of applications, like, the, uh, as I mentioned, the oil and gas, and also other porous media, like the cement, batteries, fuel cells, and so on. The challenge here is that mainly for the space scale, 
you have to deal with a lot of uh, uh, different order of magnitudes uh, between the, those pores. In particular, for the nanopores media, those are the ones that experimentally they can be, uh, they, are, they are invisible, so it means that uh, uh, even nowadays, you don't have the resolution to see uh, such uh, nanopores, but they are extremely important because that's control the permeability of the fluid through that media. Now, the point is, uh, from the nano uh, point of view, actually also the physics uh, of the fluids that is confined uh, can be very interesting because under the confinement, the surface can play a role and uh, uh, can change a lot of uh, the properties of the fluid that you are confined, particularly the thermodynamics, your phase diagram can change, and also uh, uh, with that, uh, you need it really to go to the atomistic scale. It means that the continuum model does not work at that scale. No. Now, one of the points that I have it is actually how can you address this fluid dynamics through the nanopores where either the molecular dynamics are not able to completely uh, take care about the time, and also the continuum model is not able to, uh, to complete the physics that you have uh, on the systems. And to do that is uh, very challenging from the point of view of to modeling complex systems. And uh, here, we are talking about realistic conditions over scales, means there's not only real materials, but real materials under operation conditions. And uh, uh, to do that, uh, you have several uh, ways in terms of methodology. Uh, the uh, chairman have already introduced uh, some of the difficulties that you have to cross in terms of space and time. And uh, also you have some of the physics, the laws of physics that can deal with each kind of region in terms of scales uh, that you have it here. Now, for the, uh, for the phenomena that I, I want to address, the fluid dynamics, you actually have to go for all these scales. If you want to try to understand how the fluid confinement in on a scale can, deal, uh, uh, can, can be described. Now, what you have done was actually a hierarchical way where you, we're going to start with the quantum mechanics using first principle calculations in order to derive force fields uh, that can capture the dynamics that you see at a, a first principle. Then you're going to use the molecular dynamics in order to determine the thermodynamic properties of those systems. And finally, do the, the so-called Let's Boltzmann uh, method where you're going to uh, carry on now the fluid dynamics in the right uh, scale of uh, space and also time. Now, this can be very challenging in the sense of uh, you have to build some uh, bridges between those methods. And this is more or less what we're going to uh, tell you today with one example that is how you're going to displace oil or gas uh, through a porous media that is the rock. Now, uh, for do the first step, you actually uh, derive the uh, assumption that I learned here in Trieste, you know, uh, derive potentials based on ab initial dynamics. And uh, you have to do the assumption of the DFT, in this case, with Van der Waals is, is uh, created enough. Uh, as well, you are, uh, create an effective potential that is fitted from DFT. So in this case, I'm forget about the electron structure. Sorry about it, the total energy conference. However, uh, there are ways that you're going to carry uh, this information uh, where in the sense that the forces that are going to describe is the forces that has been derived by ab initial methods. The second step is also very important because you need to uh, somehow deal with large scale. In, the, in this way, my molecular dynamics, now can be the ab initial classical, uh, are going to be replaced by a distribution function where I have two uh, main points. One is the spring part and also the collision parts. It also can include it, some of the forces that is involved on this uh, phenomena, particularly the wettability or the interface properties. This is something that I'm going to discuss to you uh, in a few slides from now. Well, uh, one of the points is how to control the interfaces in the flow at a non scale. And uh, to do that, uh, uh, there are two main ways. One is to reduce the interface tension. The other one is to reduce uh, the viscosity. In the particular case of the oil, this is the, uh, the way that is done. And uh, there are several ways to strategies to do that. One is using the chemical, change the chemical environment, means that you're going to control the wettability. The other one is the, either the control the confinement, so if you want to uh, have a pressure driving flow through your system, and finally, to control the electrostatic environment. 
So it means that there's an electrokinetic driving flow that you have in the system. So what I'm going to try to, uh, to show to you is that uh, you are able, by using multi-scale molecular simulations, to know or predict how many or uh, how much oil you can displace uh, over these scales. Now, uh, to, just to tell you to you how about the challenge is, so if you think in terms of a, a macroscopic scale, so we, here is a meters or kilometers, but my real systems that are in a micrometer uh, scale, the interface between the rock, the oil, and the brine, this is a multi-component, multi-phasic, and uh, uh, under realistic conditions, means high temperature, high pressure. And uh, what we want to try to do is to control the flow using nanoparticles that controls the interface between the brine and the oil. And uh, uh, to understand how is the effect uh, in the flow, you have applied either try to understand the geometry of the pores, means that uh, you want to try to see how the shape and the size and the distribution of the pores can change, as well the, chemi the chemistry behind the wettability change. Means you're going to uh, inject a fluid that, that uh, does not have nanoparticles or can have a hydroxylated nanoparticle, hydrophilic, uh, hydrophilic nanoparticle, hydrophobic one, or hydrophilic. So you're going to try to, to see if a given solution that can be displaced injecting the system can allow this fluid to be displaced. Now, the interesting point is uh, to do that, you have to really start it from the first principle of calculations, means that uh, you need to have a very good description about the interaction of the molecules with the rock surfaces. And uh, this is some of the examples that I, I actually choose because those are examples that I have shown in the previous Total Energies uh, 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 conference. One is the, related to the uh, asphaltine with calcite, also the solvent ionic exchange uh, effects that you have in the system, the connective studies on mineral surface, and finally the nanoaggregation of asphaltines and resins. So if you know how is this forces, and particularly the, uh, the energies involved here, the idea that you can derive uh, force fields that can capture the dynamics that you see at the first principle level. Now, with that, uh, you can do then uh, something more interesting from the uh, molecular dynamics point of view. That is, this is an example of a table with the composition of a crude oil that has, has, been, has been given for us for a company. And uh, you can build the oil, uh, oil model, model and also the brine model uh, that you can see uh, in reservoirs. So in this way, you are able to obtain the interface properties that you have in the system, and uh, this mo oil model can be as complex as you want. This is very interesting because now we are talking about multi-component systems under really reservoir conditions, high temperature, high pressure, and you are able to, prove, uh, to uh, probe uh, interface properties that you have it there. Just to tell you, uh, to give you to your motivation, in order to obtain one single point of in the interface tension, in the uh, research center at Petrobras, they have to spend six, three months in terms of uh, measurement because you have to wait for the oil to, uh, to be in equilibrium under high temperature and high pressure. And this uh, molecular dynamic can be very helpful in order to uh, quantify those problems. Now, uh, you also have a play uh, with, uh, to design nanoparticles in order to control this wettability, and this also has been done using first principle interactions. In the, in the end, what we want is to be able to calculate by molecular dynamics using first, pin, first principle forces based uh, uh, simulations where you can control the inter, or uh, quantify the, uh, the interface properties between the brine, the oil, the rock, and also the nanoparticles. As an example that I have to uh, choose to show to you, this is a surface driving flow where you first try to understand how the functional groups of the nanoparticles can interact with the rock surface, and this is done at a DFT level, and uh, this is mainly the force with respect to the distance, so how these functional groups is interact with the, that surface, and then can be translated in a potential uh, interatomic model where now you can describe the whole system, the brine, the oil, the nanoparticles, and also the rocks. So up to now, you can do a fully atomistic calculation in the even hybrid models where it can allow us to go for very large nanoparticles. 
Well, what you can learn from the uh, molecular dynamics. So this is a, a snapshot of my, a movie about the molecular dynamics. But the interest point here is to be able to know what is going on in the interface. Means you are able, with the molecular dynamics, know the lateral static field that you have close to the interface. And not, not only that, you are also able to calculate the interface, uh, the interface tension. That is the free energy variation with the, uh, the area here. In, the, in this particular case, we are calculating using variations of the pressure. No? Well, with that, you have explored uh, for different kinds of rocks, realistic models of oil, and also under the conditions of a, a reservoir, high temperature and high pressure, the interface tension with respect to the salinity for different kinds of nanoparticles, the hydroxylated, uh, uh, hydrophilic, hydrophobic ones, uh, also the viscosity, and the contratangle that controls the wettability phenomena in this system. Now, this is very interesting uh, because you can carry on uh, accurately uh, the first principal uh, forces that you have derived in a profit that is uh, very much uh, from the interest of the industry, that is the interface tension. However, the point is, what you can do next? Because with that, you are not able to, uh, to actually simulate a fluid flow uh, in the sense of the, the typical size that you can have it in some uh, porous medium. Right? And to do that, uh, uh, you're going to be beyond molecular dynamics. Remind you that uh, at molecular dynamics level, I have derived potential that have been derived by first principles. So we are moving for the scale of nanometers and nanoseconds up to micrometer, millimeter to microseconds in the uh, milliseconds. Now, the way that uh, you have done is basically based on the molecular dynamics uh, properties that you have it, the viscosity, the density, the interface tension, the contact angle. You have some parameters that has been derived for the let boltzmann uh, method. And now you can match the molecular dynamics properties in a, uh, in a fluid that can be uh, simulated at this scale that is now micrometer or millimeter. No? So in this match, you have to be uh, worried about the relaxation time that has to do with the viscosity, and also the fluid-fluid and fluid-mineral interactions that you can obtain directly for the interface tension. Well, this is very interesting. So uh, now what you can do is uh, basically what I'm going to show to you is a way where you're going to inject it a solution that has nanoparticles or not, and uh, see how much the oil is going to displace for a given uh, uh, rock geometry. And we started with uh, microphotography of the, uh, the rock. You build up a computational rock model. And uh, in this way, you're going to try to see as if I injected a solution, how much oil that is trapped here can be displaced. In the example, I'm going to show the, uh, this movie again. So uh, in this case, this is a Let's Boltzmann calculation that has been derived you know, uh, where you have embedded the fluid that you have it here. You have the properties that has been obtained by molecular dynamics, where the force fields have been derived by first principles. So this is the injection. And in, in green, uh, you see the oil that has been displaced. And this is very interesting because now you can understand how is the fluid flow based on information that uh, comes from the very beginning for the first principal point of view. So this, this, uh, typically, this kind of simulation has been done in a qualitative way in the sense of uh, they try to change the parameters in order to fit what has been uh, seen experimentally. And uh, in the end, you can obtain how much oil can be displaced with respect to the time for the different kinds of nanoparticles or different kinds of chemical additives that you can add on the system. In, the, uh, in this way, you can choose, or the industry can choose, the one that the best can displace your system. Now, not only this is uh, uh, interesting from the point of view to optimize what chemical additives you can add uh, uh, in this particular system, but also you, know, you are now able to see how the geometry of the system can change uh, the fluid flow. This is more or less our industry. So what you have done is to create a series of geometries where you can change the shape, the size, and randomly distribute it, uh, uh, those porous media with the same porosity. This is something very important because the samples that you have in the rocks, uh, can, each sample is different from each other. 
In this way, you can control, inject the, your fluid and see how much uh, of oil can be displaced. And uh, you also are doing some uh, uh, experimental uh, measurements to compare what you see from the left Boltzmann and also with the experimental point of view. Now, uh, I just point out that the first time that I saw a 3D printer was here at ICTP. And after that visit, I came to Brazil and uh, I won one, one of that. And uh, you try to do the LED, I mean, the porous media. However, the resolution here is not enough. So you have to, de to go to really more uh, fine resolution to uh, see the geometry of the pores with respect to the, uh, the system. But uh, this is something very interesting because now you can learn the, how the permeability change with respect to the geometry and also uh, how is the, uh, the fluid flow for those systems. And not only that, uh, then you, something that I learned here, that the Shannon entropy, so you can create more different models with different entropy. In the end, uh, you can have a correlation between the hydrodynamics and the porosity. And this was very interesting because you can directly plug this information in a reservoir simulator. A reservoir simulator means that you are deal with mainly cells that is sort of meters or kilometers. So in this way, you can see how much oil can be displaced with the time. And this tells us how is the effect of a hydromicity or the other disorder effect that you have in this system. Now, very much, very uh, interesting. So, uh, in the few years ago, we started to do this project and to collect a lot of information. And uh, one of them that uh, also, uh, it was very interesting to learn here, that this so-called machine learning. And uh, you have been able to create a database on the interface tension. And the question was, if you'll be able to obtain a model can, can be described our interface tension based on molecular dynamics calculation. So in the end, what we have done is mainly to see how the salinity, the brine composition, the oil density, and the oil composition can, uh, can actually tell us something about the interface tension of the system. Now, uh, with that, we mainly have explored different models of oil, completely aromatic one, or alkane, and also mixing of the gas gasoline that you have used in the complex oil that uh, Petrobras gave to us. So in this way, you are able to create a, a database on the interface tension. In the, in the end, you have a, uh, obtained a model that depends of the composition of the oil, the salinity, and also the concentrations of the salts, the ions that you have it in the brine composition. So this is very uh, much interesting because in this way, you can learn a little bit about how be the effects of uh, each one of those uh, ingredients, each one of these features. And uh, uh, you end up, if you compare with some, some experimental data and the other data that is available in the, uh, in the literature, for those models, you have an error of uh, 2%. So what is very nice from the interface tension point of view, again, Experimentally, you have to wait for three months to get one single data here. And with, the, uh, with that, is, uh, just, uh, uh, you don't spend so much computer time or experimental time. So you can really do a uh, uh, screen over possibilities that you have it uh, here. Now, uh, what you learn here is that uh, you can decrease the interface tension because of the aromatic fraction. That's the one that is most important. And the second one is the, the low salinity, the divalent cations and the sulfates are the one that uh, if you want to change your brine, because they have to inject the brine in order to displace the oil, so those are the ones that you have to look for. And uh, here more or less give us a recipe how uh, actually will be a good composition of the, uh, the brine that can displace the oil. Now, this is uh, also uh, interesting, however, let us come back to the physics that is to try to understand how these effects can really change, what is going on from the uh, physical point of view. So what is, how the interface tensions change due to the composition of the oil and also to do the composition of the brine. And uh, uh, for that, uh, you have two main effects. One is the, uh, you can see this peak here, you have accumulation of arom aromatic molecules, the hydrocarbons near the interface and mainly the interface tension comes from that. And the second one is the change in the hydrogen, hydrogen bond network due to the fact of the ions is going to uh, change that. 
No? And this is something that uh, you try to look at for the different models of the ions and uh, also uh, increasing salinity, how will be the effect in terms of the interface tension. So basically what you learn is that uh, the ions can change the re uh, lead to a water re coordination reduction. And this is a really uh, effect that uh, can change the miscibility of those systems and make it easier uh, to displace. Now, uh, with that, you want to learn a little bit more about the hydrogen bond network because uh, in, in a way that I, I wanted to describe how is the, uh, this effect. And uh, what you have done is uh, actually now see another interface that is the rock with the water and brine. And uh, with molecular dynamics, you are able to see how uh, the water, uh, actually you have accumulation of uh, uh, structuring of water near the interface. And the more interestingly, you can do something uh, that is a Google view of the interfacial phenomena. Means that uh, I'm going to transform my water coordination or my water uh, uh, network in something that is uh, in graph theory. So here, the vertex is the oxygen atoms and the edge are the uh, hydrogen bond uh, uh, network. So with that, you are then able to uh, map how is the configurations of the water molecule near the interface and uh, far from it, and how is the effect of the ions changing the hydrogen bond network of the system. So this is pretty much, uh, it, it can, be, can give us a very nice insight about what is going on on the interface, but with the different eyes, not only looking for the water molecule itself, but now from the point of view of the hydrogen bond network. Uh, the point here is that uh, if you want to visualize what happens uh, in terms of the interface when you have the water in the oil or the water in the, uh, the rock. So to do that, uh, you're doing uh, two other things that is a new way to see and to be. The first one, I was uh, falling in love uh, last, uh, uh, last year, I have been in a conference in Pisa, that uh, to use the virtual reality to visualize our systems. This is really very much interesting. Particularly for molecular dynamics, because it's very cheap, you can visualize now, change your ions, and see on the fly what is going on on the interface. I really recommend you to try. Now, and nowadays, you have software that can do that. And uh, also, uh, I very much interesting to use this data to transform this data in sound. Because if you, if you want to try to visualize such situation for each more, I mean, each uh, snapshot that is 300,000 atoms, this is very difficult. So what you have done is to map our hydrogen bond network in, uh, in sound, and uh, uh, in the end you can listen uh, what is going on if you have a book, water, or if you have water confined at one nanometer. So this is going to show to you uh, now. So this is the group that happens uh, in the music part. Now, what we're going to do is, uh, sound is very interesting property because, uh, thing because your brain can follow a given channel, a given instrument, mu uh, musical instrument, separately. So if you uh, try to follow the violin, for instance, in the orchestra, you follow it. So if you try to follow the piano and so on. So uh, what I'm going to, to invite you to do is to close your eyes because it's much easier now to listen. And we are going to, to list us two uh, cases. One is the book model for uh, the book water. And the second one will be at one nanometer. So let us see the book uh, of the water. If this sounds. This is how sound the water molecules, the formations of the water molecules actually, or the book phase. Now we're going to listen the same thing that is now when you confine it at one nanometer. So at one nanometer, you can see that it's much best, and you start to see other configurations. You can listen other configurations actually.
of course, this may not be a hit parade. However, it can tell us a lot about the dynamics of the water, particularly from a hydrogen bonding network point of view, and uh, uh, really tell us how is this work. So with that, would you like to, uh, to close? I mean, this is a hierarchical, multi-scale approach, going from first principle molecular dynamics, let Boltzmann, and finally uh, machine learning. And also, uh, this could be, uh, sorry for that not so noble application that the oil and gas, but that's something that for Brazil, for instance, is very much important. However, the same tools can be used for batteries, fuel cells, and uh, CO2 uh, sequestration and uh, capture. And also, uh, provide to you two new ways to see and to be using either virtual reality and sonification. So with this, I would like to thank my team in Brazil. And uh, Emilia Tacho, where is he? So he challenged me if I would be able to do jazz. And uh, I put the uh, quartet, jazz quartet here. But uh, sorry, it sounds terrible. So with that, uh, I finished my talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>